most micros can make sounds of some kind, even a little handheld job like this one. Today we're going to be looking at how some micros can be used to generate music and speech. And we're also going to start looking at languages other than basic. Well, the writer of the music we heard at the beginning of the program, whose fingers were indeed trembling over the keyboard, was David Ellis. Well, you were making some fairly sophisticated sounds there, but let's start with a simple sound on this machine, can Yeah, we? sure. Well, firstly, let's actually think about what makes a simple sound. You've got three things, really, to consider. Firstly, there's the pitch, how high or low the sound is. Then there's the duration, how long the sound actually goes on for. And then there's the volume, how loud it is. Now, on the BBC microcomputer, we've got a command called sound. And this enables us to assemble the ingredients to make a simple sound. Well, first of all, we have to think about which channel of sound we want to use, because the BBC Micro actually produces four sounds through four channels, because there's a sound chip buried deep beneath the cover of the machine, which is beavering away producing these four sounds. So first of all, let's go for channel number one. They're number dot to three. That's right, yes. Next, we come to the volume. Well, the volume can be from minus 15 up to zero. Minus 15 is, in fact, the loudest. It's a bit unfriendly, but you get used to it. Makes some sense. That's right. Well, we put in minus 15 there, anyway. Um, then we come to the pitch. Well, I'm going to put in a value of four, and four, in fact, is middle C, halfway up the average uh, piano. Next, we come to the duration. Well, I'm going to put in 20, which is a sort of reasonably short length. And then when I hit return, we'll hear the sound. It's a long way from being music. <laughs> yes, it's pretty boring. The point is, if you're writing a simple little tune, a tune is actually made up of sounds of different pitches and different durations strung together in what you hope is a reasonably interesting way. So let's do something like that. In fact, what we're going to do is write a program which will change just one of the parameters in the sound command, in fact, pitch. So I'm going to write a simple four next loop going from zero up to 200. And I'm going to go up in steps of four. And that means that the sound that you actually hear will go up in steps of semitones, i.e. producing a chromatic scale. That's rather like going through all the keys on a piano, including the black notes. Absolutely right. OK, so on the next line, we then put in our sound command, and we go sound one, the same channel, the same volume. Then we put in the name of the variable, pitch, and finally the duration. And I've selected two, which is going to be nice and short. And then finally, on the last line, we put next pitch, just to complete the loop. And then we can run it. Well, it's more fun, but it doesn't sound much like a piano. <laughs> no, well, the point is that all the sounds actually in that run are still starting and stopping, just like the original immediate sound command that I executed. And if we look at this bit of graphics, you can see how the pitch and the volume suddenly starts and then suddenly stops. And that's pretty boring, really. Yes. But in real life, you'd rarely get a note as simple as that. Oh, that's it? true, yes. Well, we can look at that train again on some graphics I've got. I think this is a 440 from Paddington coming along. <laughs> and you can see that as the train comes near the man, the volume builds up to a peak. That's the bottom line. That's right. The and then the pitch down. drops down to a lower level. So what we've really done here is we've taken our original sound and twisted it a bit. And we've actually given it a shape. We've gone from the rectangular shape of starting and stopping to something which is nice and smooth with a sort of bell shape to it. So the question is, how do we actually do that? Well, if you actually look in the program that we use to generate those graphics, we can see that there's this command called envelope here. And this is the second command in BBC Basic for making sounds. Now, it's a bit more complicated than the sound command because we've got 14 parameters that make it up. And those 14 parameters actually generate the shapes of the pitch and the volume of the particular sounds that we've been looking at. And we call those shapes envelopes. It looks a very complex command. It's a bit tricky to use because you've got to work out all those parameters. But what you can do is use a utility program which works those numbers out for you, or at least you hope it will. Now, I've got another little program which I can demonstrate to you, which actually turns the BBC microcomputer into a simple little synthesizer using sets of those envelope commands. And what I've done is I put onto the special function keys sets of these 14 envelope commands, which will create different sorts of sounds. So, for instance, if I set in that number, I get that sort of sound. That sort of sound with another set of numbers. Just by changing the various 14 parameters. That's right, but we can also go through the parameters one by one and change them. And if, for instance, we increment... You can hear that the, 
the sweep of the pitch varies as I change that number. Now, I can play three notes at once on this. It's great, isn't it? But the problem is that entering music from a typewriter keyboard is not a very easy way of putting music in. And I've got a more sophisticated setup that I use over here. But in principle, it's pretty much the same as the other machine. You've got a microcomputer here, a disk unit, a display, and an input device. Yes, that's true. This time you've got some additional hardware, which is really a souped-up version of the sound chip, which produces 16 channels of sound. And the input device this time isn't a typewriter keyboard, but a proper music keyboard. Now, the point about this keyboard is it doesn't actually produce any sounds. What it does do, though, is it produces data, which is sent down the ribbon cable into the computer. And that data corresponds to the notes that are played on the keyboard. So if I play, then I've just sent information into the computer corresponding to that chord. So those are on-off switches, just the same as those that are on the keys on the ordinary micro. Yes, that's absolutely right. Now, the point is, if I can actually play a line of music on the keyboard and send that as data into the computer, I can then record that data in the computer's memory. And then I can access that data out of the memory and play it back with an instrument.